All right, continuing. We just made our little sketch in screen grab. God, it's hideous. Of the emoji that gets us started. Now we're going to recreate it with vector shapes and give us a lot more control. So we're going to open up photop.com and we're going to drop, drag and drop that screen grab we took of our sketch. This one with the slightly gray background because that's the highest quality into PhotoP. Now, it might be high quality for screen image, but it's not high enough quality for printing. So the first thing we need to do is go to image, canvas size, inches, and see how many inches it is. And I'm going to make this 10 inches by 10 inches. Okay. And that gives me space to grow his nose and change his hat's dimensions. Then I'm going to go to image, image size, and I'm going to change the pixels to inches. I need it to be at least 8 by 10. So 8 by 8 is not big enough, right? So if you're going to do a square, which is how most emojis are designed, make it a 10 by 10 inch square at the smallest. The pixels per inch is going to be 300. This is for printing, not for screen. And what that's going to do is it's going to make my image a little blurrier. But this is just a sketch. This is a, a template to start with. And then I might take that whole image and I might decide, now we know how, to free transform it and make it a little bit bigger in that space. Maybe move it up a little bit so I can grow that nose. No big deal. Now, this is my background layer. I'm going to start making vector shapes. And it gives directions for how to do that. How you do it is in PhotoP, you're going to go to the bottom of the tools, not the very bottom. You don't want to mess with these. These are quick masks and keyboard shortcuts. We're going to go above the magnifying glass, above the hand tool, which is just for navigating and moving around. Go right to what are called the vector shape tools. The default one on the top of the drawer is the rectangle, but if you click and hold, it will open up the other options. So you can use any of these vector shape tools. I would keep it simple to start with. And then we'll go over some of the more complex ones and you can explore them on your own. So my flat base one is just this yellow circle, right? So I can use the ellipse tool and if I hold down shift, it will lock it into a perfect circle. And notice I didn't make a new layer. It made it for me as soon as I drew a vector shape. Just like a smart object, it has a little extra icon in its layer preview window that shows that it's a vector shape layer. And we need to leave it as a vector shape layer. So we will never, in this project, right click and rasterize because that defeats the whole purpose of building with vectors. Because vectors are scalable. So this shape is now scalable. It can be any size I want and it will always be perfectly clean. How do I change the color for it? How do I move it around? Well, I can use the move tool to move it around. I can use the free transform, edit free transform, just like exercise one, to change its shape. I can warp it. If I don't want to stick with just a regular circle, I might give him some gels. Make it a little lopsided. Yeah, there you go. Might be more fun, more handmade. Now, how do you change the color? This is unique for vectors. So usually, yeah, you could do this, but vectors have a color as an attribute because these aren't pixels that you're manipulating. And each vector shape can only have one color. So what you do is you double click on the, the layer window for the vector, and that will open up your color, color selector. Now, what's nice about this is you can find the millions of colors here and pick from it, right? Or you can click on anything that's open in PhotoP and it will automatically go to that color. What I want to find is a skin tone that I think works. So I might do something like that because he's this really kind of pale yellow. He's supposed to be a British professor, right? Yeah, whenever you have a color selector, the dropper is automatic when you click on other things, as long as they're open within the program. 
Okay, now I have created my first vector shape. Before I create more, though you are welcome to do that, now it's time for me to save, and I'm going to say file, save as a PSD. I always save my files with my name and then a description. So this is going to be exercise number two, and I'm going to call this emoji worm bug. And then you are good to go. And we are ready for next class. And if you want to push ahead and play with this, just make sure you're saving it as a PSD while you go so it saves your vector shapes.